I canceled a hunting trip to come back to the service of the Lord. So it's a, we're glad to be here. I believe the last time here I told you each time we come there's someone missing. And if we shall come back next year and the Lord tarries, there'll be somebody missing. There's one that was very, very close to me in heart. Spirit, that was Brother Lyle. I've always had a welcoming coming in, standing back there and listening to Brother Jack's study of the old quartet singing. They're singing in glory tonight. Well, he's one of those voices already over there, waiting for the other three. I guess I'll never hear it here on earth no more. But I certainly am looking forward to hearing it again, Brother Sister Moore, and, you, and that land where they'll, they'll never be dimmed. Uh, Brother Palmer was a great servant of Christ. I can remember Brother Jack tell me about his... his dedicated life to God were carpenters together and said he would be eating his, his lunch, have his sandwich in his hand, eating a sandwich and reading his Bible. See, he done a, some mighty great things Brother Palmer did. He's a good carpenter, a good father, his children, a lovely family. He raised them all to serve the Lord. As far as I know, they're all saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's a great contribution to any man in these days, boys and girls. But see, all that he ever done won't mount to too much until serving God, unless he served God. And tonight, what he has done here on earth, his good deeds, he's gone to his reward to be with him. God rest the soul of our brother. I know as long as this is a tabernacle here and... Uh, I know you'll, his voice will still be here. That's right. You can hear it. Right. Sister Anna Jean and, the, and her sister playing the organ and piano and how they never had to wait. Brother Palmer just stand here and he just pick the song up, go on, they catch it. And I never, I look forward to hearing him leading the song to his children, to his wife, and to the Brother Jack, his bosom friend. They've been friends for all these years. And Brother Brown... Sister Brown, and all you tabernacle, God bless you. I miss him too. God rest his gallant soul until we meet him in peace. Let's bow our head. Gracious Heavenly Father, just speaking of this great servant, I miss him tonight as him shaking my hands and that cunning little smile he always had when he said, God bless you, Brother Branham. When we'd walk in the door, I know he's come up to your house tonight. So I pray, dear God, that you'll let the fruits, his works that follow him, be great, continuing on with his children and his wife. We pray that you'll bless her, Lord. You said you would be a husband to the widows that were widows indeed. I pray for, for our, our sister Palmer. And for all the children, I know how to sympathize with both, losing a companion and also losing my dad. So, Father, while we're here tonight, we pray that you'll prepare our hearts also for that hour. We don't know it might come as sudden as his did. We don't know when it will come, but we know it's got to come. So we pray, God, that you'll search every heart that's in here tonight. God, don't leave mine out. Search mine, too, and try me. Lord, if there be any evil in us, take it out. We want to serve you. That's our full objective, is to serve you. Pour out your Spirit upon us tonight and the rest of this week. Bless this tabernacle by the name of the Life Tabernacle. May it receive full blessings of that name and be full of the life of God this week. To save every lost soul, to fill every believer with the Holy Ghost and renew the hopes that sent us, Lord, again. We pray that you'll also heal all the sick and afflicted that comes among us. May your great Holy Spirit be here, Lord, and just heal 
and anoint each one to believe. Grant these things, Father. God, help me now. If it falls, fall my turn to bring the message. I pray, God, that you'll just let the man part stand to one side. May the Holy Spirit come in and move upon us, Lord. May the Holy Ghost take the meeting, Lord. We know that we're so insufficient. We could not do it, none of us. We don't claim to be able to do it. But, Lord, we know that Thou art the one. So we're looking to Thee, Lord. Move, Spirit of God, and fall fresh on us. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Now, I want to pass greetings on down the line to the churches now that's hooked up across the state. We're on the telephone hookup, which is a fine little system that we have been able to get through our Brother Perry Green from Beaumont, Texas. And the church is completely, it's following the message all the way across the United States. It's hooked up tonight. We send greetings up and down the West Coast all the way from Vancouver down to Tijuana, Mexico, through San Jose, Los Angeles, all the groups over in there. We greet you from Freeport, also all the way to Prescott, Arizona, to the group up there that's waiting on the Lord. We send greetings to you and to Tucson. Also, Sierra Vesta, all the way to New York, up and down across the nation. The Lord bless you, each one. Wish you were here tonight. This uh, beautiful old state of Louisiana, where it seems like a second home to me. I, you know, you people up in New York, you know, I kind of laugh at you a little bit the way you talk. I'm right at home tonight. Everybody down here is yours that hello dad, brother Branham. You bring Sister Branham and all the young ones to come over to see us. <laughs> oh my, that makes me feel good. <laughs> That's real English to me. <laughs> Not disregarding you people in the east and the north and different places, but you know, I guess I was just born an old Reb and have to stay that way. I I kinda like it myself. It's real English. <laughs> Amen. I was at a businessman's breakfast sure not long ago, and they said, We will now stand and sing the national anthem. And I stood up and said, For my old Kentucky home, far away. <laughs> well, to me, that was the national anthem. <laughs> That's all I know about it. <laughs> so we send you greetings. And now, to the, I believe they are going to try to broadcast the breakfast also, the businessman's breakfast Saturday morning. Brother Green will tell you as his. At the microphones out there now, so he'll tell you what time the breakfast starts and what time each night to tune in. We thank you very kindly and pray for us. Now to the local assembly here, and Brother Jack's Tabernacle, I uh, just want to ask you a favor tonight. Being that I was going to give my Thanksgiving message across the, the nation tonight to our local churches that's following the message. In this, uh, I may be a little lengthy, and then again, I may preach some doctrine. So if so, and if you don't agree with it, just like I always said about eating cherry pie, when I run into a seed, I don't throw the pie out, I throw the seed out. <laughs> just keep on eating pie. So if I happen to mention something tonight, I well, I, it's one reason I... I took this invitation tonight to be here to bring my Thanksgiving message to the groups across the country was because Brother Jack always so freely opened his door and says, preach what's on your heart. So I feel real at home. Right. So it may be that in here, in the local assembly here with Brother Jack, there might be ministers and some people that would disagree with doctrine. Usually I have the courtesy not to mention doctrine in a man's pulpit that is invited me to come speak for him. So after tonight, I suppose I'll just be praying for the sick and doing the regular service. But I thought I would let you know beforehand that if something that I say that might be disagreeable, well, just allow it to my ignorance, I guess, and know no better and pray for me. Uh, so um, now let us turn in the Word to a chapter here that I wish to refer to many places tonight because I've got several scriptures and little notes wrote out here in a tablet. 
I remember the first time I climbed on the platform at Life Tabernacle 20 years ago. I, I didn't have to write down my scriptures and reference. I was just 20 years younger then, but now I've done past 25. So I'm the second time. So I, I've... Uh, can't remember it like I used to. I have to write my scriptures down and sometimes read down a, something other I want to refer to. And now, the Lord bless as we read out of God's Word and the book of Romans, the seventh chapter. Now, I want to kind of teach this like a Sunday school lesson. I know there's people standing and at the tabernacle, usually at Jeffersonville, we want to greet you all tonight, too, know that you're hooked up there at the tabernacle. And it looks like being at the tabernacle tonight, if you were down here, the people around the walls and overflowed. Now, I suppose you're that way, too, to all the people that's up in that part of the country that come in for the message. Now, um, we are going to use this like a Sunday school lesson. And it's not directed to anything, any certain persons or anything, just to the church, the body of Christ, that we're trying to lead to deeper thoughts and higher objectives, believing that the coming of the Lord Jesus is at hand. Amen. We believe that. Much more, it's 20 years closer than it was the first time I come to Sri for Oh, so much has happened since that time. Now we're looking forward for the coming of the Lord in our generation. Amen. I'm not looking for revival in our generation. Amen. I'm looking for the coming of the Lord Amen. in our generation. Now in Romans 7, trusting that you have your Bibles open everywhere now across the country, we want to read closely. Now this, it, this message out of here, it seems like it's on marriage and divorce. But it really isn't. To me, it's a prophecy for the church in the last days. Let us read. Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law has dominion over a man as long as he liveth. For the woman which has a husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loose from the law of her husband. So then, if while her husband liveth, she is married to another man, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from that law, so that she is no adulteress, though she be married to another man. Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of Christ, that you should be joined or should be married to another, even to him who is risen from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. For when we were in the flesh, motions of sin, which were by the law, did work in our members to bring forth fruit unto death. But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. And now let us pray. Dear God, we have just read what we believe to be the sacred Word of God. And that's what we are believing that not one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from this until all is fulfilled. And we believe that our Lord told us in Revelation, the 22nd chapter, that whosoever shall take one word from it or add one word to it, the same as part will be taken from the book of life. And we see that by misrepresentation of this word, as Satan misrepresented it to Eve, caused her to doubt one word through the whole human race into a fallen chaos. 
just one word. Then we see in the middle of the book came our Lord and Savior, and He gave us this quotation concerning it. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Then the solemn warning in the last book of the Revelation of Jesus Christ, whosoever shall add a word or take a word away, his part will be taken from the book of life. O oh God, knowing, seeing how fragile we are, knowing that we're walking on the brittle treads of life, of this mortal life, not knowing what time that we're going to be summons to answer on high. Let us, O oh Lord, lay aside everything in our hearts, everything in our minds, and look straight to your word tonight and for you to come and interpret it with living oracles. Grant it. May your spirit fall upon us and anoint the word to our hearts that we might go from here this evening better people than we are now. And we might have a closer insight on Jesus Christ. Grant it, Lord, that we might understand the day that we're living in and the preparation of God for His people in this hour, this great, crucial, dark time that we're now living in. God, anoint us. Not only speaker, but hearer. And together, make our hearts to tremble at your word. For the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Grant these things, Father, for we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. I'd like to title these few remarks that I've was going to make here, and some scriptures that I would like to follow up closely behind, if the Lord willing, to the, uh, the Thanksgiving message, to the invisible, of the invisible union of the bride of Christ, the invisible union of the bride of Christ. It doesn't sound like a Thanksgiving message. Though any uh, scripture, we're thankful for all of it. I am thankful to God to be living in this time of the closing scenes of this world's history. I don't know if I would have had a say so before the foundation of the world and the, God would have laid out the whole program to me and said to me, I, I want you to preach. And now what age do you desire to go to the earth to preach? I would have chose this age. For I think this is a golden age. I certainly would have loved to have been here during the time of his visit to the earth. But still I think this right now is a greater time. Because it's a time that he's coming to take the people that he's redeemed Near in the resurrection, when all the redeemed will come forth, what a glorious opportunity we have to speak to a dying people. Amen. Great time. We are enthused about it. And we know that history is closing out. The world's history will soon be over. Then we're going to step into a new day, to the great millennium. That as one believer, I believe in the in a millennium, Amen. a millennium Amen. reign with Christ, a thousand years upon the earth, yes. the physical return of the Lord Jesus Amen. to take a physical people glorified by His cleansing blood. Paul here is given an illustration in our scriptures about uh, the law and grace and illustrating it like marriage and divorce. This passage is very seldom preached on because it's more or less pertains to like marriage and divorce, 
but it also pertains to a greater uh, portion of marriage and divorce. Of how that he's trying to set an order here that we, as a, as a church, can no more be married to the world and to Christ at the same time that, and be legal and lawful about it than it can be for a woman to be living with a husband while she's got a living husband. And uh, I have my own thoughts of that, and I believe that what the Bible says is the truth. Now, but I believe also is to my belief that it unfolds one of the great mysteries of prophecy. And I hope that the Lord will help us tonight as we deliver this to our waiting uh, people across the country. It was said one time, I was reading, when I was writing a note for this, I, I could not exactly remember the book that is in, but I, I'm sure this is right, that one of the books I read on Mr. Moody, Dwight Moody, uh, in Chicago. We have a great listening church in Chicago also tonight. That Mr. Moody, after reading Romans 7, ran into the street, and the first man he met, he said to him, Do you know grace? And the man replied, Grace who? Mr. Moody says, The grace of God. So, it so thrilled him when he seen that what, how grace had separated us from the law and how that, what part grace played. When I, anything that I want to do is when I always told the people when I crossed the line on the other side, I like to stand up and sing, Amazing Grace, How Sweet the Sound. It saved a wretch like me. Grace. Precious grace. More of grace to know. For it's by grace we are saved. Not by what we can do. What we can, whatever we do is not counted to us. Grace is what saves us. By grace are you saved through faith. May I add to this woman grace, may I place her in the Bible also as called the elect lady. This Miss Grace I'm going to talk about. You know, the Bible declares, said to the elect lady, that if you notice, elect come from the word elected lady. One lady amongst all the other ladies was elected, like the virgin was to bring forth the body of God on the earth. She was an elected woman. God chose Mary. And also God has chosen an elected lady, which is his bride. She's elected. I hope we're members of that tonight across the world, or across the nation, rather. The illustration here showing the relationship of bride to Christ the elect lady, and how she was to be brought to him, where she would come from, and how that she would be brought to him. The church here in illustration that we got in view is illustrated by a woman, which a woman is always a type of the church, because the church is considered a bride, a bride. She is the bride of the Lord Jesus. The Son of God. Always, if you watch, watch the conditions and the conduct of women, and you'll see where the church is. Now, this, some of these remarks may seem strange to some of you, but it's complementary to the message that I have from the Lord that I'm trying to get to the peoples. The, you watch everything in the natural, how it's happening, nature. And watch it, it runs true with the spiritual also. Now, if you'll see the conduct of women in the world today, watch the conduct of the worldly church today. Just watch. Of course, now, there's also the conduct of the spiritual bride, the church. See? Watch that also. Because the natural so-called claim to be bride. Now, please let me say again to the local assembly, don't feel bad now. I'm, I'm speaking to all across the country, to the, what I think, the elect lady. So if there have to be ministers in here that doesn't agree, well, just 
hold your peace for a little while. See? Notice, just listen. Notice this character. When you see women just go on the rampage, or just doing anything they want to do, watch the church is doing the same thing. Amen. Notice. But watch when the spiritual bride, when she begins to have a revival, when she begins to come back and line herself up with the Word of God, watch then again, you see, how that the Scriptures, at that time, there'll be a message sweep out to catch that bride. Amen. Catch that woman elect. Yes. For as the world, Satan, the deceiver who deceived the first bride, to sin it against the God by misbelieving His Word. And now today as we see the church natural in their intellectual gospel going further and further away from the Word, in social gospel, we find that the women of the world on the streets, members of such, is carrying themselves in the same uh, atmosphere. You can't tell them they lost all sense of common decency Amen. that people have. Hallelujah. And that's the way the church has. Yeah. And you can see it going straight to the ecumenical council just as certain yeah. as anything in the world and right into Rome as hard as it can go. Yeah. See? Because it's prophesied and there she is. That's her behavior. But then watch again to the spiritual church how that group of people called out the elected through every revival in Martin Luther, it happened the same way in the Reformation. It happened the same thing in the time of John Wesley. It happened the same thing when Pentecostals first started. They dropped them women right back in line with the Word. And then they drift away. There she goes right back over into chaos. But then the time that the people are ready to line up, there is a message comes forth and they line with it. Luther was a messenger of one day of justification. And the church lined right with it. Some of them. The rest of them continued on. Wesley come with sanctification. The church lined right with it. Pentecost come with the restoration of the gift. The church lined right with it. The elect of that day and then faded away. Went right back off in denominationalism and went right out with the rest of them. All of them right down along the line. Now, but you notice when the people begin to try to line with the Word, there comes a fresh message from the Word of God right straight to the people. And it gets that message in line up every time. It's just in God. We have that. We have families. Every family in here is accustomed to that. Sometimes everything will run fine for you for years. Then all at once you'll hit a spell where we say it many times in the South here, when it rains it pours. And everything goes wrong. You're going through a night time. Then there's a daybreak. Then a night time. Everything runs in continuity. The prophet Paul here is saying that a woman can not uh, remarry until her first husband is dead. She cannot remarry as long as her first husband is a living. She, by no circumstances at all, she must remain single as long as her first husband's a, li a living. And if she should do such a sin, she shall be called an adulteress. I'm speaking of the natural now to type it with the spiritual. If this woman would commit such a sin, then she is marked an adulteress if she has two living husbands at the same time. Therefore, she has forfeited by doing this her rights to God and heaven by doing so. She sure has. She is an outcast from the economy of God according to the scriptures that I've just read. So is the church when she tries to mix creed and denomination with the word of God. Amen. She can't be married to a denomination Amen. and be the bride of Christ at the same time. Amen. She's got to be dead to one or the other. The law says so here. There's plenty of laws in God's Word, and that's His law. Paul's speaking the same thing here. She cannot be married to a church of worldly creed and be the bride of Christ because she, one is contrary to the other. Now remember, say, well, we believe this, but we don't believe that. If you're married to Christ, Christ 
is the Word of God. Amen. In St. John, the first chapter said, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Amen. And the same was made flesh and dwelt among us. Christ was the living Word. He always was the Word. He's still the Word. He always will be the Word. Amen. He was only the manifestation of the attributes of God. For He was the Son of God, and any Son is the attributes of His Father. And just as you were in the genes of your Father, in the body of your Father, when He was a young boy, you were in Him. Yet He could not have fellowship with you because He didn't know you. But then, through the bedding grounds of a mother, you were brought forth into the earth, and become in the image of your Father, then He could fellowship with you. And so were you sons of God and daughters of God before there even was a moon, stars, or a molecule. You were sons and daughters of God. For you are only the physical manifestation of the attributes that was in God at the beginning. For there's only one form of eternal life, and that was you before. You don't know nothing about it, neither did you know when you was in your earthly father. But you're manifested to, in His image. In the image of God you are made, and you were manifested for the glory of and the fellowship of God. Amen. And therefore, as sure as your gene had to be in your father before your natural birth, your spiritual gene had to be in God because you're an expression of the attributes of his thoughts before the foundation of the world. Amen. Right? No way around it. That's right. Now, now we notice then that life being in you, God's life, being in you from the foundation of the world. Now, now you cannot mix denomination, creed with the word because you're too contrary one to the other. That's exactly what Satan tried to do with his intellectual conceptions to Eve. He said, he admitted that God said it, but he said, surely you'll not die. See, and they believe that. And that's what creed has done tonight. Denomination has separated the people from the Word of God. Didn't Jesus say when He comes, You through your traditions have made the commandments of God of no effect to the people? And through our creed, we have dissociated the fellowship of the Holy Spirit to anoint the Word of God that's laced out for this generation... We have separated the people so by denomination that they cannot have a chance to see it. Amen. Now, God, he, every generation, He has a new part of His book. It all goes together. Like my body was built. I'm told it started in the spine. Well, it wasn't all spine. It went from that to ribs and from lungs and to hands and arms and feet and so forth. And it come on out to be the person that I am. And so was a God manifested in the beginning. And finally He was appeared as Jehovah, God the Father. Then He appeared as God the Son in Jesus Christ. Now He's appeared as God the Holy Ghost, the same God all the time. Three manifestations of the same, same God. Now, we find in this that each generation, God has lauded His Word from the beginning, just like evolution came. Just like first thing God created probably was... Let's say He created botany life first. Then He created animal life next. Then He created human life next. Kind of an evolution, rising higher. So has it been in God and His church. Justification under Luther. Sanct that's pulling His bride out now. He's creating His bride. Justification under Luther. Sanctification under Wesley. And so forth, you see. He's the evolution of the Spirit being given more and more because the body is building, coming to the head, which is Christ. The body of Christ. Now, she as a woman, if she is married to Christ the Word, she cannot be married to a church denomination at the same time. For she's bound by it. She shall cannot live with both husbands at the same time. There's contrary one to the other. 
One is God sent, the other is man made. So they're contrary. He said, Let every man's word be a lie, mine be the truth. God said that. Just as much contrary to one another as law was to grace, as Paul's speaking of here. One must be dead to have the other. And if she tries to mix them, she shall be called an adulteress. Oh, think of it. New York, Arizona, across the nation, think of it. God said if she's tried to be married to two at the same time, she shall be called an adulteress. What adulteress can enter heaven? Would God marry an adulteress? Certainly not. He asked us not to do it. She shall be called an adulteress. Then her children, if she is an adulteress, her children is illegitimate. Illegitimate. Illegitimate to what? Not to the church, but to the Word. She's illegitimate. What a picture of this Revelation 3 here of the last day Lady Osea Church Age. What an illegitimate group. What a denominational mix-up. Lukewarm. Carry on and call themselves Christians and deny the Word of God. Amen. Having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof. Amen. As the prophet said they would be. Marriage is the oldest institution in the world. Marriage was performed first and instituted in the Garden of Eden. A woman is entrusted with certain characters that she must not defile. A woman is trusted to that. There's not a creature on earth like a woman. There's no female dog. There's no female of any kind entrusted with the character that a woman is. A woman was not even in the, the beginning of the creation. Because God knew that she had fallen, all other females could not commit adultery. She's the only one that can commit adultery. If she'd been made like the original, that would have been discomplimentary to God's great wisdom. See, she was made a byproduct of a man. But because she was cast over in that side, she has also been given a sacred charge from God for redemption. She's got characters that she must not defile. If she would mire them, she's defiled for lifetime. No matter how much she's forgiven, she can't be justified. I'll strike that in a little bit. Got a scripture on that in a few minutes. She can be forgiven for her defilement, but she cannot be justified in this life. It's always with her. Notice. Now, she's been given this. She may be forgiven, but not justified. Her body is given to her a sacred trust from God. No female dog, no bird, no other animal, no other creature like that. No. She's the only one. By it, she is the reason it's so sacred. She is to bring forth life into the earth. Her body is the bedding grounds of life. Therefore, that's the reason she's given this sacred trust. Now, here's where you may disagree, many of you theologians. That's what defiled the whole human race. Is that adultery at the beginning? Amen. Amen. Her bedding ground was marred. She brought forth those twins, Cain and Abel. Amen. One act, two children. Amen. Search the Scriptures. Amen. Notice, now, we find that her body is a bedding ground, and therefore it's a sacred trust not to defile that. Now, I'm speaking now bringing this to an illustration to show you where the church stands. I'm not speaking of you women, whatever you are, that's between you and God or you man, but I'm speaking of the church and Christ. Now, this she is given to bring forth life that only God Himself can give. Her husband might be the germ bearer, but God has to produce the life. That's right, it has to come, all life has to come from God. Any life has to come from God. It's perverted, and that's what makes it sinful, but life has to come from God. He's the author of life. Amen. Now, she has a sick one. I want to name three things here that she must not get away from. 
Now, I'm speaking, keep the church in mind while I'm speaking this to the natural woman as Paul is here in the seventh chapter of Romans. She has a sacred trust of virtue committed to her by her Lord. A certain virtue. Nothing else holds it but a woman. That's right. That's committed to her by God. She must not defile that virtue. If she even does something wrong, she must confess that to her husband before she takes her and make it right the same as the church that was married to the law has to come also before Christ, before the second marriage. She has to confess that if she doesn't and she lives with her husband for 10 years and then confess it, he has a right to put her away and marry another woman. That's the scripture. Fornication is unclean living. Joseph, fear not taking thee, marry thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. He was minding her to put her away privately, see? After you'd already engaged to her. When you're engaged to her, as far as God's concerned, you're married to her. Notice, now, she has a sacred trust of virtue that's been given her, trusted to her by the Lord. God gave her that virtue. Just as it was in the Garden of Eden, she'd say yes or no. She has a sacred trust of womanhood committed to her that she must not break. The womanhood I'm speaking of here is her conduct, her character around man. Not letting every man look on these screens and see these movie stars kissing and hugging and slopping around all these women. A woman does that is of a bad character. She might be virtuous otherwise, but see in her heart, when those gland, sex glands are in the lips, the man kisses a woman, he's actually potentially committed adultery. Sex glands are in the woman's lips and in the man's lips. He could kiss her on the hand, it wouldn't mix with the sex glands, but the sex glands is in the lips. You see all this nonsense in the, the uh, Hollywood today of all this slopping and loving around with women and so forth and little girls looking at all that. No wonder our morals are rotten and decayed and filthy. Because it's put before the children. That's right. It has to be that way for the last days. Now keep the church in mind. She's kissing and slopping and mixing Amen. out and everything else but the Word. Amen. Let the devil in education and scientific churches and so forth, when scientific education and everything is absolutely contrary to God. Amen. The whole system of civilization we have now is absolutely antichrist. Amen. Educational system is antichrist. Amen. Civilization is antichrist. Amen. It's against God. Amen. You say against civilization, God will have a civilization one of these days Amen. that won't have any death associated into it. Amen. This modern civilization come by Satan. Amen. I'll prove that to you if the Lord willing tonight. Out of the Bible. All these things are of Satan. Our new civilization will have none of this in it. She has this sacred womanhood. No wonder that men act around women the way they do is because women act around men the way they do. Amen. She characters herself out here the pair of shorts on and skin tight and man's clothing and things out on the street Amen. twisting around. Amen. No matter what she says, she might be as virtuous to her husband as she can be, but in the sight of God, she is an adulteress. Whosoever looketh upon a woman to lust after her has committed adultery with her already in his heart. Amen. And she presents herself to be that. And that's exactly what the church has done with the world. Notice, that's committed to her sacred virtue, sacred womanhood, and then sacred motherhood. Honor her husband. Just look today. In certain cities, many cities, they even have big parties in what called society. Church members, too. Set their hats in the floor and they all get drunk and pitch their keys into it. Each woman goes and picks the key out of the hat for the man she'll live with over the weekend. All kinds of such parties, which I've got so much to say here, if the Lord willing, I haven't got time to go into it. Such a filth! And the church is just as bad. Amen. Right. Amen. Committing adultery with everything she has no business to be going into. She should stay with the Word. Amen. Buildings are all right. Hospitals are all right. All these other things are all right. Educational programs, that's all right. We have to live here. We have to read, right? That's one of the economies, right? 
We weren't supposed to put on any clothes at the beginning. I'll preach on that later this week. Lord willing, but we have to wear clothes because God gave us clothes. But in the beginning, we didn't need them. We were veiled. Now she's veiled to her sin. She don't even know she's sinning. And she was then by the... Now she's veiled by the devil. Then she was veiled by God. The difference of it. Now we find out that she's been given this sacred trust that she must not break of womanhood. Act, have her character. Raise her children. Be honorable to her husband. Nowadays they pay a bit more attention to it than nothing in the world. You ought to sit in my office sometime and see men bringing their wives where they try to get right with God and confess of all the men they live with and everything else since they've been married. Amen. Oh, you say, that's, oh, that's Pentecostals. Amen. The others won't come. So it's, I'm speaking of how it can get away when you get to mixing up with the world and the church and all the fashions and things that we have. We're no more like the original Pentecost was than day is from night. Amen. We've drifted off somewhere into some dark chaos somewhere and lost. <clears throat> what a sacred trust. What a responsibility to a woman. Now, see why she's a type of the church? Which has the same responsibility as a woman has a sacred responsibility to her motherhood, to her virtues, to her husband. The church has a sacred responsibility to prayer into the Word, into Christ, just the same as a woman has. And as a woman drifts off with another man, when the church goes off on these institutional programs and building programs and schools and so forth, I have nothing against them. They're all right. They serve their purpose. But they're not. Jesus never said, go make schools. Amen. He said, preach the Word. Amen. That's where they neglected. Not make institutions, hospitals, and so forth. That's all right. But that's not the church's duty. No. Amen. Their duty is to preach the gospel. Amen. But we've done everything else but that. And we've drifted in just like Satan did, mix it up with some gospel, something else, and something else. Just got a conglomeration of nothing. Amen. Corruption. Amen. Even our whole, the whole world, what's the trend of the world? Reading Reader's Digest, sure not long ago, where young girls are going through the menopause. And man, the change of life between 20 and 25 years old, they're going through the middle age. Corruption. Why? Because of scientific research of food and stuff that's broke down from the natural things we should put in our body. We are nothing but a bunch of dying corruption. Now, that's what the church is also. Amen. It's in the same condition. She's a type. She has the same precious virtues by spirit given to her to preserve the Spirit and the Word and never commit adultery with anything of the world or anything. Stay virgin to the Word as a woman is to stay virgin to her husband. It's a sacred trust. To honor her Lord's Word above every man-made creed, wisdom, denomination there is. The church is given that trust. If they say, well, my church, I don't care what your church believes. If it's contrary to the Word of God, stay away from it. The Bible said Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and forever. Mark 16 said, These signs shall follow them that believe. If a church preaches different from that, don't you, you die to that thing. Be born to get into the Word of God. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's how far it was to go. These signs shall follow them that believe in all the world and every creature that will believe. See how we got away from it? Sure. But she's responsible for it. But now... Look what Hollywood has took the virtuous things from our women. I'm sitting here looking at a dear old woman, Sister Schrader. Many of the women here, back in Sister Moore over here, the older women. That remembers a few years ago, if their mother or even them would have walked out on the streets the way some of these women walk today, church members, they'd have locked the woman up for being insane. She forgot to put on her skirt. Amen. Well, if it was insane then, it's insane now. Yeah. Well, look, the whole world proves it's insane. Look at the murders and things that's going on now in the world. Yeah. Insanity. The whole thing is coming to fulfill revelations. We may get to it this week. What are those hideous things? That's not natural. That's spiritual things that make people scream for the rocks and the mountains and everything else to fall on. The complete, total insanity this world will go into 
right away. It's almost there now. Well, you see the footsteps of it. There it is. It's marching right out on the street, right down the church pew. Total insanity. Do things that a human being wouldn't think of doing. You're being civilized. Look what Hollywood's done to the woman. Look how it is. it's robbed the sacred virtues of the woman. On and on we could go. See, all this she lost. How did she do it? Because there was a subtle instrument called the church. Like there was in the Garden of Eden. A subtle person. The devil walked into the church just like he did in the Garden of Eden and deceived her into it. She's deceived. The woman thinks she don't mean to be wrong. Eve didn't mean to do wrong. It wasn't willfully. But she, the Bible said in 2 Timothy, 1 Timothy 3, she was deceived. And deceived is not when you willfully do it, it's when you're deceived into doing it. And that's just exactly what's happened today. She's been deceived by television, by magazines, by these people, these, all these fine things that are going out on the street. Modern girls, they look at magazines and they look at pictures, they look on the street, they see the clothing in the shops. How Satan, that great instrument of, the, of hell, has come down amongst the people and deceived them into these things. Amen. And the woman thinks she's all right. And she's dead and don't know it. Amen. She's far from God. See how she lost all this and how subtle it was? Today, I want you to notice, Jesus spoke of it. Also, if you'd like to read it, Jesus made mention that this thing would come to pass. Did you know that? In His last hours, just before His crucifixion. Let's just read it. St. Luke, the, the 23rd chapter, and just for a moment, like a Sunday school lesson, begin with the 27th verse, I believe I got marked out here. Jesus going to Calvary. Listen as I read it. All right, St. Luke 23, 27. I believe that's where we have it. My note's got it that way. Yeah, here it is. And there followed him a great company of people and women, which also bewailed and lamented him. But Jesus, turning unto them, said, Daughters of Jerusalem, weep not for me, but weep for yourselves and for your children. For behold, the day, days are coming, that they shall say, Blessed are the barren. And the womb that never bare, and the paths which never gave suck. Think today, the disgrace for to have a child. See? Then shall they begin to say to the mountains, fall on us, and high in the hills, cover us. For if they do these things in a dream, green tree, what shall they do in a dry? Speaking of the day that when women would no more want children. They want a dog or a cat or something like that, but she don't want children anymore. Why? She's old Mother Hubbard if she has a child. See? She don't want... That's the, that's the remarks of Hollywood. You don't want this woman to be an old Mother Hubbard. So she'll... He'll have some operation performed himself or her once that'll keep her from having children. They don't want no children. Jesus spoke of it, and what did he say? At that time, they'll begin to cry to the rocks and the mountains to fall on us. She'll practice birth control so she can go to parties. She can't be bothered with a baby nursing her. It'll just farm her. Once she's pregnant, it'll be it'll just farm her. She won't look like she used to. And her husband, eager enough to let her go that way. She won't give him a child. Jesus spoke of it. And he said that when they've been doing this at that time, they'll go to crying then for the rocks to fall on them. It's the coming of the Lord. They pray great sums of money for cats, dogs to mother. That's right. She must mother something because it's a God-given nature to her. I notice a hunt, big game, an old bear in the fall of the year when she has been bred to the male bear. She's got cubs that is born. They're pretty good-sized cubs. Maybe weigh a hundred pounds or better. She'll make them scat and hibernate to themselves because she's going to bring forth some more cubs. They're born in February. The bear knows nothing about it. They're born in little sacks. How that God has them open these little sacks themselves, little like little cellophane sacks. They find their way around their mother sound asleep. She hasn't eaten anything since October, and this is February. They come around and nurse her to the middle of May. Then when she sees her cubs, her pretty good sized cubs weigh 
maybe 15, 10, 15 pounds apiece. They've nursed her. Why she gets the milk? That's God's idea. She lives herself and produces milk for the cubs. And then if her breeding doesn't take, and she don't have any cubs, she'll hunt up them year, last year cubs and mother them all summer long. Because it's God-given instinct. She has to mother something. And if a woman won't have a baby for her husband, she'll take a dog or a cat or something. She's got to mother something. It's a nature. But to bear a child for a husband and raise it to the service of God, that's entirely all out of her line. She should all, should all, she'd be so disgraced if she did by her sin-loving society of this 1965 type of women. A true picture of the modern church today. Neither does the modern church want any of these years screaming, shouting, tongue-speaking Acts 2.38 youngins around her. She don't want any of them. Moving and crying and screaming, Amen, Hallelujah. Well, such a child would immediately put her out of her denomination. <laughs> they had one like that in one of the churches. Why? They'd throw her out right quick. Amen. Why do you let such stuff as this go along? So see, she, she's pregnant with something. Because <laughs> she's bringing forth members all the time. Yeah. But she don't want them screaming, hollering, blabbering. Acts 2.38. Miserable creatures that she thinks they are. It would certainly embarrass her. It would ruin her her educated, ethical, scientific society church that she belongs to. They'd throw her out of the next council. She can't have it. So she don't want to be pregnant with the Word because that's the only kind that the Word can bring forth. Born to the Spirit of God, it has the Spirit of God in it. No intellectual church joining, creep going, bobbed hair, painted face. There's no such a thing as that in our way. You don't find that in the Word of God. You find an old-fashioned, sanctified, Holy Ghost-filled child born to the Spirit of God, screaming, hollering, shouting, praising God. That's altogether out of the reaches for her. She don't want that. Oh, no, sir. No, indeed. What does she do then? So she brings forth a pair of painted face, short-wearing, Jezebel society, illegitimate cats, they call them, I think it is. I think they call it cat. Look at that cat going there, they say, or something like that, you know. She was born or married or connected with her first husband, the first Adam, by the adulterous wife of Eve, Adam's first wife. You said adulterous, she sure was. But oh, she claims that this Adam, this first Adam's dead. Oh, sure. He died a long time ago. I'm reborn again, she says. And I'm certainly married to the second Adam, Christ the Word. Now, notice what she loves. <laughs> Watch her lover. You don't see who she's in love with. The Word says this, but she said, my church says this. Then who's she in love with? Amen. Amen. Who is her husband? Amen. Her own fruits prove what she is. Amen. Exactly right. Shows what she is. Notice. She was born first to Adam because that's her natural birth. See? And she never left that. That's the lover of the world. She claims that she's born the second time to Christ. But her lover notices Adam yet because she loves the world. And another, another thing, notice what kind of children she's bearing. <laughs> that tells what their papa is. Amen. Amen. Was well, first Adam or second Adam? If the church brings forth a child... Oh, uh, the second Adam, he acts the second Adam's way back like they did on the day of Pentecost. That's the free, true second Adam's children. See? That's right. Their nature is like his and hers. Yes, sir. Her daughters, painted face, bobbed hair, wearing man's clothes, trousers. The Bible said for her not to do it. She cuts her hair, it's a shame to her. You say, shut up on that. That's what the Word says. I'm only pointing out nature. That's what she does. Her sons, her sons born out of her, rely upon education, schooling, Amen. some Bible Amen. school, so-called, Amen. some great college, supposed to be a long time ago, hatch them out in some sort of an incubator style, denominational seekers, religious, Cain-like, just illegitimate to the word as Cain was, just as Ill, but illegitimate as Cain was, Sir? denominational seekers, you see what it is? 
God never did organize a denomination. He's always been against it. And it but they hold right on to it. So you see what they're bringing forth? That shows you their papa and mama is. Exactly. It's exactly. Just as illegitimate as Cain was, that's kind of a child he brought forth from Eve. They got away from the Word, and they see what she brought. That's just exactly what the church has brought. The same thing. Can prove it to you by the Word. That's where education and civilization come through Cain. That's exactly right. For they claim, but they, they claim to be sons of God. But they're the denominational bread, denominational school scholars, everything else. That's exactly right. Amen. Subtle, smart, my, so was the serpent, her father. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Just as subtle and scientific creatures as Cain was. Yeah. And it's exactly yeah. the same thing. Yeah. You say, Brother Bram, is that true? Turn to Genesis 4.16 and find out. Get back here to Genesis 4.16 just a minute. You'll find out how that happened. And Cain went from the presence of the Lord and dwelt in the land of Nod on the east of Eden. And Cain knew his wife, and she conceived and buried Enos. And he built a city and called the name of the city after his son Enos. On down to Turban. On down forth they began to come designers of instruments, music, and so forth. Civilization came by Cain. Amen. Right. Building cities. Instruments. Scientific man come by Cain, the serpent seed. Amen. Now notice the 25th verse. And Adam knew his wife again. Now he knew her once and she had two children. Search the scripture. Amen. She had Cain and Abel. One act and two children. Amen. You say, they told me not long ago it couldn't be happened. We got a case in Hollywood. Right, uh, Hollywood. We got a case in Tucson right now. Up in court. A woman gave birth to a colored child and a white child at the same time. They say she can't do it. She can't have two fertile seeds, too. They got it right in court now. I know dogs will do it. Animals will do it. And she's got there, the white man said, I'll support my own child, but not him. And the woman made the confession. She lived with her husband that morning and the colored man that afternoon. If it's in the, the doctor says in the space of 24 hours, it'll happen if there's another fertile seed there. And there she did it. And that's exactly what happened here. Cain, that, Satan that morning, and the serpent, and Adam that afternoon, when she, and she had two children. Now, Adam knew his wife again the second time, and she bare a son. Remember, there's nowhere in the Bible that said Cain was Adam's son. It said he was of that evil one. Not Adam, the devil. Knew his, the second time, and uh, knew his, and had a son, and called his name Seth. For God said she has appointed, that wasn't a real seed, appointed me another seed instead of Adam who Cain slew. So and to Seth, to him also, there was born a son, and he called his name Enos. And then began man to call upon the name of the Lord. Amen. Not out of Cain's generation genealogy, but out of Seth's genealogy. Amen. So Cain is the evil one. There come the serpent. Now, notice, the Bible plainly says here that her first husband must be dead. Not just put away, he's got to be dead. I just got through preaching on marriage and divorce, and you all know about that. I'm not speaking out uh, altogether this congregation here, but out across the nation. All right. Now, you see what happened there in marriage and divorce. When it's really the seven seals was open, that brought out the real truth of it. So, to be married to the second Adam, Christ, the word, you must separate yourself by death from your first denominational husband. Because there is no one of them that can take all the Word of God. Just show me where that one's at. Or you say mine. The other fellow says he is too. Put them together and you find out you're both wrong. Here's your denominator. Read Revelation 17. So you see, you've got to be dead from that thing. Now, I'm not speaking this local assembly. I'm speaking all together across the nation. You must be dead to your first husband. If you're united to Christ and still married to a denomination, you're an adulteress. You're a lady Osea. Amen. Amen. A church across the nation, we are following Jesus Christ the Word. Amen. To be in the bride, you have to be remarried to the Word of God, which is Christ. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God, and the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. As long as you hold to man's tradition of denominations, you are called in God's Word a adulteress. As long as you're 
denominational creed seeker belonging to a denominational church that denies the word, you are an adulteress. But the Bible says. Amen. Jesus said you cannot serve two gods at the same time. You either serve God or man, and man is the world. He that loves the world, the things of the world, the love of God, not even in him. The seed of God can't be in him at the same time. The love of God, uh, the love of the world's in there. When the seed of God is operating through you, that's the word of God. The love of the world can't be in there at the same time. Now where's the short hair and the shorts and the painted face? Now where's it at? You can't be virtuous to Christ, the word of God and to serve a man-made denomination at the same time. Amen. It's contrary to the word Paul said here. What about Romans 7? Amen. <laughs> Neither can you bear God's sons of His Word to this illegitimate denominational group. You cannot do it. In your incubator, you cannot bring forth a word, Son of God, that I'm speaking to the church. But still, you claim to be very religious. So was Cain, the prostitute Eve's son. Yes. Very religious. Built altars and offered sacrifice and paid his tithes and done everything that any other religious man would do. Yes. But he failed to keep that word. He failed to have the revelation. Yes. And the revelation is the only thing, the revelation of the word. What is the, what is the revelation? Jesus said, Upon this rock I'll build my church and the gates of hell can't prevail against it. Yes. Faith is a revelation. Because faith has been revealed to you. Abel, by faith, offered by revelation. Faith, offered to God a more excellent sacrifice than that of Cain. Cain thought to eat apples. <laughs> they still got that idea. But it wasn't. It was an adultery. Serpent seed. And there, when the seven seals opened, it declared it and proved it. My book's just out on it. I think we've got a thousand here now. Notice. That scripturally from Genesis to Revelations at the end time both trees are coming to the seed and proving themselves. Yes. Here we are right today, Laodicea and the bride. Yes. Just as clear and pretty as it can be in the scripture right before your faces. You can't serve God and mammon. You can't be a virtuous, Bible-believing Christian and associate yourself in a denominational affair. Amen. You just can't do it at the same time. One's got to be dead to let the other live. Amen. Neither can you bear God's word, son. Neither can the church bring forth. You don't want one of them screaming, children shouting and speaking in tongues and all them things. They, you can't do that in a denominational church. They won't have you. They don't bring them like that. They take them up and shake their hands and say, if you believe, you've got it. <laughs> as long as you put your name on the book, that's all you have to do. See, it's, it's illegitimate children to the Word. Still claim to be religious. So, pregnated with Satan's wisdom and knowledge, the church has become. They send their people away to school to learn how to say, Amen, just right. They learn how to say all this and be very intellectual. Yeah. What is it? It's pregnation of the devil. Amen. What did Satan pregnate Eve with? To disbelieve the Word. Yeah. Or intellectuals, intellects. Yeah. And it ruined the whole creation. Amen. That's exactly what she's done in the Word today, the church. She's pregnant herself with Bible schools and colleges and things Amen. like that. Reading, writing, and arithmetic. And they don't know about God's in a hot and top, but know about an Egyptian night. Amen. They know all their creeds, their prayer books, and everything else, but know nothing about God. Amen. They know when the Word is vindicated, when God spoke back there and lotted out His Word. To each generation as they come along, here come Noah along and he preached that generation. Now what if Moses would have come along and said, let's build an ark? Amen. He'd been all out of style, but he was a prophet. He had the revelation of God. God vindicated to be the truth. He brought the children about and Israel out and showed the pillar of fire before him and vindicated the prophet and said just exactly what he would do and he did it. Amen. They said, let not God speak, let Moses speak, lest we die. He said, I'll speak to him no more like that, but I'll raise him up prophets. And they'll speak. There stood Isaiah standing there. That a virgin shall conceive a man like him in a day one. How's a virgin going to conceive? Unto us a son is born. A child is born. A son is given. His name shall be called Counselor, Prince of Peace, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. Amen. Upon the throne of his father David, he'll reign. There'll be no end to his kingdom. How's he going to be? He didn't know. He just spoke what God said. It's beyond any imagination, intellectual. It's beyond any scientific research. It's a Word of God. Now we school our 
seminary students and all kinds of Bible theology and things like that, man-made theology. Amen. It's got a bunch of church just exactly a lady to see like God said it would be. Amen. Oh, my. How I look at that and it makes me shiver. Pregnated with intellectual conceptions. You've got to be a high school graduate before you can even enter. You've got to have all God stand before a psychiatrist before you can be ordained. Would you imagine Peter, James, and John going before a psychiatrist? There were 120 up there couldn't even sign their own name. Stand before a psychiatrist, see if they, if all of their, if their reflex was just right and so forth. They had a reflex, but it wasn't the intellectual conception or scientific research. It was through the power of God. When it struck them, they know nothing to do but act out what the Holy Ghost said do. They didn't pay attention to any intellectual, what the church said, and what the priest said, and what this said, that said. They moved by the Spirit. Fearless man. 1 John 2.15, he says, If you love the world, the things of the world, the love of God's not even in you. So how can you be pregnant with the Word of God which condemns the world? Condemns Hollywood. Condemns all of its fashion. Condemns all these parties and carrying on and so-called that they have in the name of religion. It condemns it. How can the word pregnate a person? How can a bob-haired woman, painted face, wearing shorts? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How can a preacher goes out here to a seminary and looks at Acts 2.38? Amen. And sees that there's not a person in the Bible ever baptized in those titles. Amen. Hallelujah. And then still says he's pregnant with the Word of God? Amen. He's telling you a lie. Amen. He sold his birthrights. He's committed adultery against yeah. the very thing that he said. Yeah. He's put away in divorce. Yeah. God's going to have a virtuous church just in sight of bride. Bible said the word's not in you. So what kind of a children are you bearing? Pregnated denominationals. There has been no death to separate you from your first lover. What will the Joneses think if I go to crying and speaking in tongues? What will they think if I'm rebaptized? Yes. Yeah. Amen. Well, Amen. I'm not. Amen. Are you married to Joneses? Or are you married to the church? Amen. Or are you married to Christ the Word? Amen. Now, that's why she's still bearing his children. <laughs> what the heck should she have? Here's some of their names they call today. Cats, beetles, monsters, Rickies, Rick Ellis. <laughs> Cats, beetles. That's a church member, sure. They're all <laughs> sons of Cain, which is the sons of the subtle beast. It's as smooth as they can be. Now take a good look for a moment with your own spiritual insight at your soul. Just look around. I'm speaking across the nation now. Look just if you met you out there in the Brandon Tabernacle. You and the Tabernacles on the West Coast and Arizona and everywhere you're at. Look at yourself for a few minutes. You say that message you're preaching, Brother Branham, is wrong. Look at yourself a little bit. Let the Holy Spirit search your minds with the Word. You'll agree with the message. Let Christ, the anointed Word, search out your own conscience. Let Him get into you and see if that's right or not. And that's just one or two things to mention when there's hundreds of them. Does the Bible agree with the woman bobbing her hair? Oh. Does the Bible believe, agree with three baptisms in the name of Father, Son, Holy Ghost? Oh, no such a thing. No, Does the Bible agree with woman wearing man's clothing? Oh, I'll just take them three there. <laughs> well, there's hundreds of more. Yeah. Search it out in the light of God's Word. Right. You say, I'm a church member. So is Cain. Yeah. So was Eve. Yeah. The Bible predicts in the last days that the Lady of Sin will be the same. Yeah. Let the Holy Spirit search your conscience and you'll agree with Daniel 5.12 when the queen come in before Belteshazzar and said she found out that there was a prophet Daniel was among them and he was a dissolver of doubts. <laughs> you let the Holy Spirit, he's the prophet of the day. Let him come into your heart right now and examine with the word of God and the doubts about the message will be all dissolved. He dissolves all the doubts. You find out it's exactly on the word for this day. You cannot preach Luther's message today. It goes in it, but that's the feast. 
Cannot preach Wesley. Cannot preach Pentecostal. We're plumb beyond that. Amen. They denominated and died. They're the stalk. The stalk come up with a blade. That's the first condition of the church. Now that there don't look like the first grain that went in the ground. The wheat. The second come forth is the pollen. That still don't look like the grain. It looks more like it. It's coming more in the image of the real grain. But the blades don't sure look like the grain that went in the ground. It's a carrier of the life that was in the grain. But what did it do? It denominated just like all other nature. Fits in with it. It died. Then what's the life run right up into the tassel? It's got a whole lots of little little balls hanging on it. Looks like it's little little grains in it. Looks like it's a real grain, but it isn't. Then it drops down into the shuck, and what does it bring forth? A shuck. Now you take a grain of wheat when wheat's first coming forth, as Jesus said, a corn of wheat, and you take that wheat and open it up, you pull it off the stalk, you look at it, you say, We got a grain of wheat. Be careful. Amen. It's just exactly like the grain, but there's not a bit of grain in it. It's a shuck. Amen. There's the Pentecostals. Yes. So much as Matthew 24, 24 said, to see the very elected in the last days of it is possible. Amen. But you pull leaf by leaf back. You ain't got no grain. The grain's right back in the back of it. See? And then the life comes out. That denomination goes into the grain. Then what happens when the grain begins to grow and to get bigger so it can cover over something, the denomination pulls away from it. Why ain't we got a denomination out of this? They never will be. Amen. It's a grain. It can't go no further. Amen. We're at the end time. So what does they have to do now? Lay in the presence of the sun to be ripened. <laughs> the word to be ripened into your heart to bring forth and live what we're talking about. Yes, sir. <clears throat> then you'll have no more doubts if you let the Holy Spirit reveal it to you. It's like the queen said about Daniel. You may say, what's this all got to do with Thanksgiving? What are you talking about, Brother Branham? You're just quarter to nine. You said that about Thanksgiving. What a message for the occasion to me. Amen. Yes, indeed. The Pilgrim Fathers were very thankful for their newfound way of life. Being separated from the old English denominations and creeds, they could marry to the new anointed word for their age. That's right. The new anointed word of their age for their day. So can we be thankful as pilgrims like Abraham separate herself from the things of the world, all of our associates. Abraham was a pilgrim. God has separated us from all the dead religions. I'm speaking across the nation now. All the dead creeds. Into what? Separated us and opened us a new land. A new message for this day. Pentecost dried up and died. Like Luther, Wesley, and the rest of them. It's no more than a bunch of churches pulled together. Good people in there yet. It's got to be come out. What did he do? He opened up the seven seals of the last message. Did you notice that? The seven seals, which all the mysteries of the seven church ages are sealed with seven seals. The reformers didn't have time to do it in their days. They didn't live long enough. But this blessed revelation of the seven seals, it's opened to us in this last days from a prophecy that went forth to Arizona. How I ask God, why are you doing me out here in this desert? Did you know Moses wrote the New Testament or the Old Testament? He certainly did. First four books gives the laws and everything. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, and Deuteronomy. He wrote the Old Testament. To do that, he had to leave all of his associates and loved ones and go into a desert. Paul wrote the New Testament. That's right. He wrote Romans, uh, Romans and all the rest of there, Hebrews and Timothy and so forth. And to do that, he had to separate from himself and go down into Arabia, into a desert, for three years. Amen. Get the revelation of God. All you say about Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they were scribes and just wrote what Jesus did. Paul separated and put the word together. Amen. That's right. Well then, uh, look, if it taken that and had to go to a desert away from their loved ones, you remember what, what time is it, sir? How many ever heard it say amen? amen. Was it exactly right? Amen. Then we've got the revelation in the last days. Amen. For the message of the Lord God together, His bride together. Amen. No other age has it been promised. It's promised in this age. Malachi 4, Luke 17, 30, St. John 14, 12, Joel 2, 38. Those promises are just exactly like John the Baptist identified himself in the Scripture. Jesus identified himself. What did they say? Way was such a person. John's a wild man. The church wasn't able to receive it. That's the pattern. Neither will the church receive it today. But to the elected, God's calling. Hallelujah. 
to the elected. They know it. Amen. Calling the virtuous bride the word the last day church, the elected lady of our Lord Jesus Christ. Word. If Jesus is the word. Amen. How many believe that? Amen. All right. Then the bride is always part of the bridegroom. Amen. So the bride will not be a denomination. It will have to be the word manifested Amen. to be the bride of Christ. Yes. He promised to do it. He said how he never uses, loses his pattern. He always did it by the pattern. He's done it every time by the pattern. He does it again, calling out his virtuous bride. In the last days, the lovely Rebecca waiting for her Isaac. What a beautiful time. Here it brings into view the two books that's going to be mysterious to you when you read the book of the seven church ages. The two books, book of life, said one says you can put your name on it never comes off. The other says you take his name out of the book of life. This brings it perfectly in view right here. I'm going to stop a few minutes, maybe on a few notes here, and catch this before we close. Life is a sacred thing to God, and it's recorded in a book. God's the author of life. Do you believe that? Yes. Our natural life here we have is just a perversion. It really should be the right life to begin with. But it's perverted by the natural birth. The first life or your first union, you were joined in at birth by nature. A natural act, a natural human being associated, man and woman together, associated together in sexual affair, which brought your first life here, and that's associated with sin and death. How can you miss seeing the serpent seed? When you see the woman a byproduct, not another female like her, made in that order, in order she could be deceived. God knows if he didn't know the end from the beginning, then he wasn't God. If he isn't infinite. If he, isn't, if he can't be infinite without being omnipresent, omnipresent, knowing all things, eternal. So he knowed all things, and he had to make that woman. The man didn't have a wife. The wife and the man was the same thing. He had the feminist and masculine spirit in himself. And he had to separate, take a byproduct. After the whole creation made, no female created but God in the original creation can do a thing like that. She was made thus to do it. He knows she would do it. If he didn't, he wasn't God. But see, the attributes that's in God had to be displayed. He, he used to be a Savior. And to make everything perfect the way he had it, then there could be nothing lost. Oh, don't be children. Be men and women. We're at the end road. Amen. Notice. Now, it was nature associated with death. Your first husband that had rule over you was your nature by natural birth. Natural, you love the world because you are the world and part of the world. Is that right? Your desires was by nature to love the world, which you're a part of. You're a part of nature. You believe that? And that's your natural thing. That's the reason you have to be born again. You have to separate. You have to die to that first husband. You can't live with it. You just can't say, well, I'll divorce him and hang him up here until the occasion. No, sir. No writing of divorcement. He dies. Amen. The nature of the world has to die. Amen. Every speck of him has to die. Amen. You have to be reunited again with another nature. Your name of your first nature was born and put in a book of life. And all your deeds is wrote in it too. Everything you've done under that nature was put in a book called the book of life. You notice in Daniel... When he comes to the ancient of days, whose hair was as white as wool, ten thousand times ten thousands came with him to minister to him, the, the bride. And then the books were opened, and another book was opened, which was the book of life. See? There are saints already there, the church, the bride. Another book was opened, which was the book of life. Now you, but when you were separated from that union by spiritual death, your natural desires to cut your hair. Your natural desire is to wear shorts, paint your face. Your natural desire is to be intellectual, smart man, know something better than the other. That's what Eve wanted. That's the very thing she wanted. Well, say, you little two-bit, two-before preacher, stand up there and tell me I've got a Ph.D., LL, that just makes you farther away from God every time you add one. Amen. Amen. That's right. It's true. Yes, sir. See, that's what Eve took. She was pregnated with that kind of a pregnation. That's what the church is today by Bible schools and intellectuals. Look, everyone disagreeing with the other. A big mess up. Just exactly what the Bible said. Babylon. Amen. 
The bride knows where she stands. She's very few. There won't be many Amen. saved. Just a very, very, very few. You say, well, they said thousands, yes, but they've come up through the 2,000 years, too. On every age where it come out, every Luther's age, and that group, and then died off, and they went denominated, and then Wesley, and then come Pentecostals, and so forth, and all the little out branches of Baptist, Presbyterian, Methodist, Nazarenes, Pilgrim Holders, and so forth. See? All those branched off from there. Like the leaves, but you remember when it went down and the grain began to ripen, you find that before that grain can ripen, everything in that stalk has to be dead. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Can't you see where we're standing? Yeah. Life is in the grain again. What is it? Just exactly like the same grain that went in the ground. The same Jesus in the bride form. Same power, same church, same thing, same word. The same word sucked up through these and come out here and come to a head here. And all that life it come through here, it picked up its people, now it's forming up into a head for the rapture. Speaking on that tomorrow night or next night when the Lord willing. When you're separated from your first union by spiritual death, now you are born again or remarried again to the new spiritual union of not your natural life, of the things of the world, but of eternal life. That germ that was in you at the beginning found you. Now, your old book is gone with your old union. Now, your name in your old, in your, has been transferred. Now, you say, do you mean to tell me that my old book, God put it in the sea of His forgetfulness? You stand perfectly before God. Now, your name is now in the new book, not the book of life, but the Lamb's book of life. What the Lamb redeemed. Not the old book of your natural union, but your new bride. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Your new life is in the Lamb's book of life. Your marriage certificate. Hallelujah. Where your true eternal germ from the beginning takes hold. Now you're not only forgiven, but you're justified. Glory. Justified. Romans 5, 1 said, yeah, Romans 5, 1 said, therefore being justified by faith. Look up the word. The word don't mean forgiven. The word means justified. It don't mean you're forgiven. For instance, you heard I got drunk and, and done some evil things and everything. Then you come around and say to me, you found out I didn't do them. Then you come around and say, Brother Bram, I forgive you. Forgive me. I didn't do it at the first place. Now, if I did do it, I'm guilty. But you could forgive me. And I wouldn't be guilty, but yet I'm not justified because I've actually done it. But the word justified is though you've never done it. Amen. Amen. It's not even regarded at all. How's it done? In God's book of the seal of forgiveness, your old book and marriage is divorced and dead. It's not even in the memories of God. Amen. 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 You are justified. Therefore, being justified. He was accused. You were accused. You never done it in the first place. The old union's in the sea of God's forgetfulness. He wasn't married to it to begin with. He, the bridegroom, bore your shame himself for you in your place. He took your place. For you were predestinated for him to be in his bride before the foundation of the world. The Bible said so. You are the predestinated seed. How did you come to do this? You were deceived into it by your first marriage to your adulterous parent, Eve. It's no fault of your own. By your natural birth, you come after Eve who committed adultery. Yes. That's the reason you was born an adulteress. You're a sinner to begin with. Yes. That's right. You was deceived into it. You had no, no you know, nature fault. You never did it. Because that little germ that was in you was to be you before the foundation of the world. God put your name in the Lamb's book of life. Like my little eagle story, all of you heard it. A hen old farmer said a, a, a hen one time, he didn't have enough hens, I, uh, eggs to go into the hen. So then he found an eagle egg and he put it under it. When the eagle was born, it's the funniest looking chicken them chickens ever seen. Little old eagle going along the hen to go cluck, 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 cluck. Little eagle said, I don't know what that thing sounds like, but I'm following her anyhow. And they went out in the barnyard and began to scratch the manure piles. And she said, cluck, 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 this is good, this is good, you join ours. And this is what... That little eagle, he couldn't eat that stuff. <laughs> he, just, he 
he just went along with the chicken because he didn't know. He didn't know what to do. And then she went out there and she'd get this and that and the little eagle just, uh, he just had to stomach it. But he didn't know how to do it, but he seen all the chickens doing it, but there's something different. He didn't like that. So one day the mother knowed that she'd laid two eggs. So she began to hunt for that other one. Flying around, searching like the great Holy Spirit. One day it flew over the barnyard, that denomination. She looked down there and she seen her baby. She screamed. It was the voice of something that echoed from the inside of him. Oh, that sounds right. Oh, let a real predestinated, born, charm predestinated, but God hear the word of God. It's music to him. He knows it's the truth. We started that denominational stuff anyhow. Join us. Come go with us. We got a social party. We got this. We got... It just didn't sound right to the little fella. She said, son, you don't belong in that group anyhow. You belong to me. You're mine. He said, Mama, that sounds real. How am I going to get out of this? Make a jump. I'll catch you. <laughs> That's all you have to do. The anointed word of God being vindicated before any man that's born to be a son of God with the predestinated germ into him for this hour, he'll see God's message as sure as the God of heaven. Martin Luther saw it for his, Wesley saw it for his, the Pentecostals saw it for his. Now, what about you? Amen. They went into denomination. Here's the word condemning it. Tell you what we're to have today, and just exactly Malachi 4 and all these other promises for the hour. What do you see? What are you looking at? Amen. Here we are, the real genuine eagle shirt. My sheep know my voice. The strange you will not follow. Why it was put in there by predestination. You were foreordained to a son of God. You were in God before the foundation of the world. You're only manifested in this day for His honor and glory. How can you do it without honoring His word? Yes, sir. Which you are a part of that word by predestination because, look, the God is the Word. you believe it? Amen. Well, then, if He always was Word, in the beginning was the Word. Yes. And if the Word was God, then you were in God. Amen. The Word, the part that you're to play was in God before the foundation of the world. Amen. He's seen you. He knew you. He predestinated you to it. Yes. Now, I'll tell you just as that eagle recognized that voice, so does a... A real born-again Christian recognized the voice of God speaking through the Word when they see it anointed and vindicated. Look, he looked up there. He didn't see this old hen cluck cluck around here. Join us and go over here and go to this and go to this and that. He saw a being like he wanted to be. Sailing in the air, screaming free up in the highs above all the vultures and things of the earth. Hallelujah. He wanted to be that because it was in him to be that. And a man that's born of God, his son of God, has to have the nature of God. He has to be like God. He honors God. He's part of the Word of God. In this last days when this bride taking form, it's exactly the same power that he was in at the beginning. He's come up through these organizations and so forth and come out for the bride. He can't be nothing else but that. They ought to see them Jews in their days when they seen it manifested there before them, as the prophet said he was. He said, search the scriptures. In them you think you have eternal life. They are they that testify of me. If I do not the works of my Father, don't believe me. But although you can't believe me, do not believe the works that I've done. They said, our fathers eat man in the wilderness for 40 years. We know where we're at. He said, and they're everyone dead. That's eternally separated. Everyone died. There's only three. Two come out of a million. Two million. That's one in a million. When a, uh, an injection, the sperm from male and female, there's usually one egg fertile. There's one egg, one germ that's fertile. Have you ever seen hybriding in cattle? Notice, there's a, a million eggs. There's a million germs. And when they're are discharged to come together to the womb. Coming through the tube and into the womb. They meet. One of them is eggs. A million eggs. A million germs. There's only one egg in there fertile. There's only one germ fertile. They're all alive. You can watch them little calves beating around there. A speck that you can put on a match stem. And Demon Slim's listening in the night and he remembers when we took them. He took me down there and showed me how that worked. Test tubes. And put just enough that you could put on the end of a match. There was thousands of little calves and bulls in there. But 
that's only one of them can live. Only one of them. And here's a big ball of them here, and you'll notice one will crawl out from among this one here, go right over the germ, come over here, and an egg will come out from among these other eggs over here, and they'll meet together, and the rest of them die. Yet they're alive. But they die because it's something, someone made this one fertile and ordained this one too. It's predestination, my brother. Yes. Sir, God has to determine whether it's going to be boy or girl, redhead, blackhead, or whatever it is. It's determined by God. It's more mystery than a virgin birth to me. But Lord, it's the rest of them die. There were two million people come out, sung, shouted, done everything, spoken, and not ever spoken tongues, but they shouted and, and give God glory and danced up and down the sea and done everything that all the rest of them did. But there were only two went into the promised land. Caleb, Caleb and Joshua. Only two. That's one out of a million. It's one out of a million in natural birth. Every one of them had the same blessing. Oh, you Pentecostals. I hope you don't wake up too late. One out of a million. Look, there's supposed to be 500 million so-called Christians in the world today. If Jesus had come, there'd only be 500 to go with him in, if that statistic would run true. Well, there's more than that missing every day over the world. They know nothing about it. I understand, said the scribes, you know, that uh, why does the scribes say that, that Elias must first come? They said to Jesus, he said, Elias has already come and you didn't know it. See? He did just exactly what the Scripture said to happen. So must the Son of Man suffer under... They didn't recognize Him. Yet they were all in the church, all claimed to be alive. And you said a real born-again Christian, a real servant of God. Hear that Word of God, He'll come right out through every denomination to that real fertile ground. What? That bedding ground? He'll just do it. I don't know how He does it. God's ordained it to be done. You were deceived in the beginning by your first marriage. Now you know what's true. Just like I said to the little eagle, when he heard the bridegroom's voice, he went to it. The anointed, vindicated word of God for the last days. Nor was a vindicated word for his day. Do you believe that? Amen. Well, his message won't work today. Moses was the vindicated word of his days. Do you believe that? Amen. It won't work for now. Jesus was, John was the vindicated word. Do you believe that? Amen. It wouldn't work in the days of Jesus. Certainly not. Amen. No, sir. Law and prophets were until John since then the kingdom of heaven. The apostles, them who set forth the Bible. Here come Luther out in the Reformation. His, word, that, his church won't work today. Amen. Wesley's won't. Amen. Pentecostals won't. They worked in their day. But it's another day. This is the opening of the seven seals. I know it sounds strange to you, but God has vindicated so perfectly there's no, no question in it. Amen. Amen. Just perfectly. Yes, I ain't scattering that to the local assembly here. I'm speaking to the people out across the nation. See, do what you wish to. Now notice, the anointed word of his days, of which you are a part by predestination. Amen. You immediately, like, knew. When you heard that, you knew right quick that you was an eagle. Amen. You also realized that you wasn't a denominational chicken to begin with. <laughs> you know, there's something wrong there. There's something wrong. That's right. For you know that you were trapped into it at the beginning. He, the bridegroom, took away your shame and put it in a sea of forgiveness by the washing of the water of the Word and the blood of life. That's what the Bible said. Your first husband that you were married to the world, the anointed bridegroom which foreordained you, has washed you by the washing of the water by the church. That don't sound right, does it? No, sir. You might find that in the almanac, but not in God's Bible. Amen. By the washing of the water, by the Word. Amen. And the Word, see? By the blood, you are standing completely justified as though you never did it at the beginning. This is my message to the church now as, you, as we go off the air just in a minute. You are standing. If you're standing on God's Word and with God's Word, every amen, ever jot, ever tittle. Amen. 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 Where are you standing? I'm trying to tell you, pull away from them shucks and get out here in the wheat. Amen. Where you can get right before the sun. I hear the coming of the combine. Oh, oh. You're standing complete justified. Like 
you never did it in the first place. Hallelujah. Talk about a thanksgiving. I feel real good. I'm more thankful for that than anything I know of. You are the pure, virtuous, sinless bride of the Son of the living God. Every man and woman is born of the Spirit of God and washed in the blood of Jesus Christ and believes every word of God stands as though you never sinned at the first place. You're perfect. The blood of Jesus Christ. How can you, if a man, if I was supposed to die in the morning, a man took my place, I cannot die for that sin. Somebody took my place. And Jesus, the Word, took my place. He become me that a sinner that I might become him the word. Amen. Let me hold true to it. Not the church, the word. Amen. Amen. Oh, that spiritual union of Christ in his church now, when the flesh is becoming word and the word is becoming flesh. Manifested, vindicated. Just what the Bible said would happen in this day. It's happening. Day by day. Watch me. Accumulating so fast out there, those deserts and things taking place, that I couldn't even keep up with it. We're near the coming of Jesus to be united with His church where the Word becomes the Word. Amen. Call of the Holy Spirit searching the heart. You're standing completely. You never sinned in the first place. God don't even know to, it's in the sea of forgiveness. You never did it. You were accused of it by the accuser. But really, from the beginning, you were predestinated to be a son and daughter of God. You're standing there washed, and your old book of divorce was put away. And it's dead, absolutely out of existence, even in the mind of God. You're the virtuous bride of Christ, washed in the blood of Christ. Precious, virtuous, sinless son of God, standing with a pure, unadulterated bride word that he washed by the water of his own blood that become flesh and manifested that he might take you which were predestinated in the bosom of the father before the beginning the same as he was he was that great attribute of God called love whatever you are you are a service of God whatever God wants you to do where your place is God placed in the church some apostles prophets teachers pastors he placed that by virtue of his own predestination and you were that to begin with. Your first wedding was annulled. It was you never done it in the first place. Amen. Because there's only one thing could do it that would be God come down Himself and tuck your place Amen. in the form of the Son of God, Jesus Christ, and wash you by the water of the washing of the water by the word. The word. Not the denomination. The word washed you. But if you won't stand in the water of the Word, how are you going to be washed? You're still as spotted as Eve was. Oh, dear dying Lamb, thy precious blood shall never lose its power. To all the ransomed church of God be saved to sin anymore. What is sin? Sin is unbelief. Unbelief in what? The Word. Unbelief in God, which is the Word. Pure, unadulterated. Oh, hallelujah. Leaving soon for the skies. Amen. <laughs> Standing ready. Thank your garments washed for the water of the bleeding word. The word become blood. The word bled for you and your washed and bleeding word. The word bleeding. The life of God in the word and the word was bled for you that you might be washed from the filth of these uh, prostitutes and be clean and sanctified by the washing of the water of the Word that makes your mind and heart stayed on God and on His Word. Amen. Now, how do you know it's true that God comes down and vindicates it and proves it? You say, well, I didn't believe it that way. They didn't believe it Jesus' way. Amen. But God proved it. Amen. They didn't believe it Noah's way. They didn't believe it Moses' way. They were willing to take Balaam's word for it. We're all the same, so let's just associate together. Separate yourself, the Bible says, from unbelief. Hallelujah. Now, notice, you're not only that, but you're going to the wedding in the skies, and you are wearing the wedding band of predestinated, unmerited grace. A wedding band of grace. 
one merit of your own, God did it Himself. He knew you before the foundation of the world, so He slipped the wedding band on you there. Put your name on a book. What a thanksgiving. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh. Praise our God. Now, in closing, I might say this. We all know that the modern church Pentecostal in its present condition, all the denominations together, I'll throw them all in one bundle because they are. Yes. You remember, he's going to bundle the weeds first and burn them. Take the, he takes all the wheat stalks and burn it all up first, and they come and get his wheat and take it home. They're all gathering in a bundle, bundle of Methodist, Baptist, Pentecostal, and all going to ecumenical counseling. That's right. They're all burned. See? We all know that the modern church in its present condition and its present state is in no condition to finish up the great commission that God gave the church for this day. How many Pentecostals can say amen to that? Right. It's in where oneness, twoness, threeness, this, that, other, fuss, fight, one's this and one's that and other, and every one of them is afraid to face the word right down to the face. Right. They know you can tell about it and they say, oh, I, I can't help it, I can't believe that. I don't care what he does. I, see? see? Shows what mammy and pappy you had. You might be a state presbyter someday. You might be this, that, or the other. You better be a son of God. Amen. Now, we know that the church could not, the Pentecostal church, by no means, by no means, could carry out the last day message in its present condition. Amen. Could it? No. Well, it can't even agree on one or two words in the Bible. Amen. How are you going to do it? It can't do it. So you see denominations out. Amen. That's right. It's going to be an elected people that's elected for it. See? No, no. And so do every one of us know that the whole rank of denominationals, Pentecostal and all, are dead. That is to the born-again Christian of the message. <laughs> Your first husband's dead. You know he's dead. God let it die. It's finished. All of its scientific, intellectual, educational, scientific ways of its so-called Bible schools and things has perished. What's it done? Separated. One to share, and Trinity share, and two to share, and over here and down here. Such a mess up and call themselves Pentecostals. Well, I went to a young man that he's listening right in right now. And a young woman, she belonged to a certain church. She said, I said, they're separated. I said, what's the matter? She said, we're a different faith. I said, oh, I'm sorry. Are you Catholic? She said, no. She told me the domination church she belonged to, a Pentecostal. I said, what are you? He's Pentecostal too, but not another denomination. <laughs> oh, you know the Roman Catholic Church started off Pentecostal? How many know is that true? Amen. It takes you 2,000 years to get where it's got now. Just don't take nothing of the Scripture no more. Amen. Nothing. Well, the Pentecostal in 20 years now will be worse than they are now. Amen. It keeps on going the way it is now. Why, well, sure. See what it is? It? What is it? Look who their papa and mama is. Let their women cut their hair. They can do nearly anything they want to, as long as they belong to this church. That's all necessary. Oh, no wonder, no wonder the damnation of God heaped up. God put it right before your eyes, and you shut your eyes and fail to look at it. Shutting up your bowels of compassion when you see the true word of God in these seven seals being vindicated and proved to be so and witnessed in the heavens across the nations and everywhere else but great signs and wonders that He promised He would do. Then you shut up and say, oh, I don't, I can't help it. I think, oh, my dead and don't know it. Sins and trespasses, you're dead. Oh, my. We all know that the church in that condition couldn't finish up this last day. How could it bring Malachi 4 in? How could it do it? They don't even believe in such a thing. How could it believe in bringing Luke 17, 30? How could it bring in all these other scriptures as promised in this last day? It couldn't do it because it denies it. As it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the coming of the Son of Man. Look at the condition Lot, as Sodom was in in that day. Look at the condition of the church in the day. Look what happened to Abraham, the elected. Look what happened to the Lot and them down in Sodom. Look at the Billy Graham and old Roberts and them down there amongst those denominations. Look at the elected Abraham church pulled out. Look what kind of sign that Jesus himself, the incarnated God standing there in human flesh. You said that was an angel. The Bible said it was God. Amen. Lord God, Elohim. Standing there in human flesh, showing that he would... I saw anoint his church in the last days. It'd be God working in human flesh again, as it was in the days of Sodom. 
so shall it be at the coming of the Son of Man. Same kind of a thing. They see it right there in the Scriptures. Read the search the Scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And there are they that testify this. <laughs> so we know they're dead. God let it die in its own selfish, scientific, educational program. All the Pentecostals used to talk about, about sending a kid away to Bible school back when old brother Lout and them was around here. They'd run you out of the church. But oh, now it's a great thing. My son's away in Bible school. Amen. Just digging his grave. So, now, oh, you think they could take it today? You think I'm trying to support ignorance? I'm not. I'm telling you, there's a difference between this intellectual age that we're living in, where the church has been pregnated with science, and all these so-called figured out and everything. You don't figure out God. Well, that, that priest had God figured out so perfectly, they know how the Messiah was going to come. But he comes so different from what they had figured out, it wasn't scientific. How could this man be an illegitimate child? Where did he go to school at? Where did his education come from? Where did he get this learning? Well, you try to teach us, you're born in fornications. Hmm? Oh, for goodness sake. See the same thing repeat again? See it repeat again? All in their religious science. Religious science. According to what their Bible school says. That's the way they want it. That's the way it has to be or isn't. God just fools them every time. It always comes different. It didn't Noah's time, didn't Moses' time, didn't Christ's time, didn't John's time, didn't disciples' time, didn't Wesley's time, didn't Luther's time, didn't Pentecostal time, and so has it again. Amen. It don't change its pattern. Always comes the same thing. Only reformers through them seven, six ages to the seventh in Revelation 10 said, this hour has changed. Amen. It did. Now we're closing and saying this. Finish up the Great Commission. How could they do it? We know they're dead. God let it die in its scientific age, all of itself. So he could do what? Open up the seven seal mystery to the undenominational bride. Amen. How can a denomination accept those seven seals when it's absolutely contrary, serpent seed and all those other things? The whole four seven mysteries is contrary to what they've been taught because they took the old school from the Bible school. And the seven seals of God, when it was open there on the mountain, let God know, let me die right now at this pulpit if that ain't the truth. Yeah. And I foretold you a year and six months before it happened, when he told me to go to Arizona and what would happen out there in the desert. Yeah. And this man sitting right here tonight was standing right there in present when the seven angels come down and even mag uh, the magazine, uh, Life magazine packed the article of it. It's right there in the observatory and everything. Now they don't even know what it's all about. Amen. Amen. And everything has been said, oh, even to the destruction of California coming up now and all these other things and how it told me how many days it would be how it would be where this big earthquake happened in Alaska and that would be the beginning of the sign of time and what would take place and just word by word what it said it's never failed one time you've never seen it fail and it can't fail because it's God's words and heaven and earth will pass away but it can't fail God had to open up those seven seals not in a denomination I've always been against it but out of the denomination, he might take a bride. Not a denominational bride. He couldn't do it. It's against his own word. He opened those seven mysteries in there that shows forth, brings forth those things that's been hid since the foundation of the world. Might be revealed in the last days to sons of God. They brought that forth now before the people that they sit. There are you now to this undenominational bride. Oh, my. There's your two books. One of them is the Lamb's Book of Life. Your name on there is predestinated on there. It can't go because you can no more take that away in nothing. See? Because it was foreordained to be on there. But the regular Book of Life, you can take that off at any time. See? If you don't repent, it's off anyhow. Because you're going to stand the judgment. The bride don't even stand the judgment. It goes in the rapture. Just as I say this in closing, it's getting late. So it's almost 9.30 and we're going to be out here by 9.30, the Lord willing. Just real reverent now, listen. One time, saying this now, this goes across the nation. In New York now, it's 25 minutes after 11. Way up in Philadelphia and around through there are those dear saints sitting there listening right now in churches all around. Way up, way down around Mexico, way up around in Canada and all around across. 200 miles anywhere within the North America continent here almost. People's at it. Listening right now. Thousands times thousands listening. And that's my message to you, church. You that's a union, spiritually union by the Word. That you're dead to these old husbands. You're born anew. Don't try to dig him up. He's dead. 
If you're a born-again Christian, that little germ that's predestinated to you, it's word coming on word, on word, on word, on word, and become the full statue of Christ. Right. So he can come get his bride. Now we're just ready for one thing. That's the coming of the Lord. There's your name on the book of life. The book of life is the Word of God. Because the Word is God, and God is the only thing that is life. So your name was represented in the Bible before the Bible become on Word. And if you're here to do that, won't it vindicate that Word? Won't the church vindicate itself? Won't Malachi 4 and all these other things perfectly, perfectly vindicate itself and show that that's what it is? When Jesus come, He said, If I do not the works as promised for me, do don't believe me. Which one of those groups did He join? He said, Oh, you're in your father, the devil. And his works you do. See, we're in the last days, church. That's my Thanksgiving message to you. Now before closing. One time I was up in Glacier National Park. We heard all day long that they had a they had up a, a glacier fire that was going to fall at night. So the people was busy all day long getting that thing ready because it was going to pour that fire out that night to put a liquid fire falls like a great glacier of water, but it looks like a rainbow almost when it comes out of that fire falling out of this glacier. All around through the park, wife and I and children walked around through the day. We wanted to stay to see that fire exhibition. So it, that um, it was promises that we would see it. We'd witness it again. They said they have it ever through the summer seasons and so forth. And I said, well, will we be able to see it? That we promised it tonight. We're promised that. Said they're up there getting it ready now. After all have been made ready for the event. That's what's taking place right now. All's been made ready for the event. A church being pulled out for his namesake, taking his bride out from amongst the world. These denominations, all the world and the filth and things of the world. And everybody, the event was made ready. Everybody was standing out. They said, now, let's keep watching right up on top of the mountain there. That's the way it's always come. That's the way it's to come this time. That's the way it always comes. Not through a denomination. Never did God use a denomination. Never. The reformer goes forth. He gets the word of the Lord, and then when he dies, they build a denomination out of it. That's what the Pentecostals and all did. When the new issues and everything, that's just where the where thing come out. A new word added, then they build a church out of it, made a denomination, separated themselves. It had to be that way. That you, can't, you can't beat nature. Nature follows the same routine all the time. Stalk, leaf, tossle, so forth. Shuck, and the wheat. Now notice, all was ready. Everything had been kindled and made ready. And everybody was standing out. I had my head sticking up. My arm around my wife was looking. The children standing there all was looking up like that. My eye was something because we was expecting it. It was promised to us. Amen. The Word promises this. It shall come to pass before the great and terrible day of the Lord shall come. Behold, I will send unto you Elijah the prophet. He shall turn the hearts of the children back to the fathers. Amen. Yeah. This shall come to pass in the last days. I'll pour out my spirit from on high. The former and latter rain shall come together in the last days. All these promises through the Scriptures been given. We're looking upward, watching the true bride across the nation this hour. Looking up, church, he's coming one of these days. Just as sure as he come the first time, he's coming again. Amen. Get everything ready. Separate yourself from shuck lay before the sun. Keep looking up. Be in our expectations. All at once, we heard something from the top of the hill. A voice come down through the loudspeaker and said, All things are ready. <laughs> then this man standing right there by the side of me said, Let the fire fall. <laughs> there it comes pouring down across that mountain. A glacier of fire and blazes of licking, a sight to behold. Brother, let's get all things ready. For one of these days, the fire is going to fall. We're going up. Now let's get ready for the fire falling time. We're in the last days. We all know that. And we're ready for the coming of the Lord. The thing to do is separate yourself from all sin. Separate yourself from anything that pertains to the world. Don't love the world or the things of the world. Let no man by his creed deceive you. Amen. You stay right straight in the promise of God, the Word of God. And that Word, if it's a Word for this day, God vindicates it so. If He doesn't, it's not the Word for this day. 
The word that fell on the day of Pentecost will not work this day. Amen. No, sir, that was for Pentecost. This is for the bride. Going home with the bride. We got something different. The Pentecostal represented that again. We're in the bride age. No more than a word of Noah would work in the days of Moses. No more than a word of Moses' law would work in the time of Paul here. He tried to tell them, you're dead to that. Amen. And you cannot have that. Church, you, I'm speaking to you tonight across the nation, if you separate yourself from denomination and all the filth and things of this world and all those things that keep you in man-made creeds and orders and things like that, you separate yourself, look up. Get ready. The fire's going to fall one of these days. God's going to let him come. A sight to behold. Would you be ready when he comes, would you be ready to go up with him when he comes? A secret rapture of the supernatural bride shall be made more in, from mortal to immortality, be changed in a moment in a twinkling of eye. We which are alive and remain shall not prevent them which are asleep. The other day on Armister's Day, I was standing down there in Tucson. My little boy wanted to see the parade. I was studying, and I was, didn't have time to do it. and had a lot of sick calls and things. So he said, Daddy, they won't take me. He said, take me. And I said, all right. Brother Simpson, I think he's here. And his little boy wanted to go. So I jerked him in the car and run down. I stood there on the corner and watched him. After a while, I heard way back in the distance a muffle coming. Boom, boom, drums beating. And I stood there. I thought, well, these little fellows, they really read all these books about Army. They'll really like that. I noticed coming up first was the old World War I tanks. There they come up, little bitty fellows like that. There was, next come after that was the next time after that was the big new tank of the Second World War, the big Sherman tank with the muzzle brake on it. Then come the next and the next, and after a while come the Gold Star Mothers. And then after a while come 12 veterans that's left in the whole state of Arizona from the First World War. 12 veterans. After that come afloat, the unknown soldier, the little white cross. There stood a sailor, Marine, and a soldier standing in garden, a little petition on the float. On the other side was an old gray-headed mother sitting with a gold star pinned on her, a little lovely wife crying. Her husband is dead, a little ragged boy. His head's turned sideways. His daddy was killed. And then behind that come more and more and more and then to the new army. I stood there, what a sight to behold, but how sad. And I thought, oh, God, one of these days I'm going to behold another sight. There will come forth the resurrection. They which are first will be last. They which are last will be first. The old prophets will come breaking forth first. And they see that procession going marching up in the air. And we which are alive and remain shall not hinder them which are asleep. For the trumpet of God shall sound. The dead in Christ shall rise first. We'll fall right in line with them. Going in. Hallelujah. All down through the age of Luther, Wesley, Methodist, Presbyterian, on down to the last age who receive the word in their age. God bless you. Get all things ready, and the fire will fall. Let's bow our heads just a moment. I wonder in this visible audience tonight, while I've held you here for till 9.30, is there one here? Is there a dozen here? How many here? It says, Brother Branham, I'm ashamed of myself the way I've lived. I have catered a lot to denomination and man. I know that I'm not up with the Word of God. I'm just going to ask you to pray for me, Brother Branham. Raise up your hand. God bless you. God bless you. Just look away up into the balconies around. God bless you. I know. Now, don't be ashamed. Now, don't be... And out yonder, across the nation, from New York to California, from Canada to Mexico, you people that's gathered in those churches where those faithful little groups that's believed this message with all their hearts. They've come out, come out of great tribulation, come out through those denominations. They're germs of life. Do you feel the urging tonight like the little eagle that you hear something that's a little different from what you've heard, but yet in your heart you know it's the truth? You in there, there's a pastor standing there somewhere. You got your hand up. I'm going to pray for you. These things wasn't done in a corner for him. Remember, straight is the gate and narrow is the way, but few there will be that will find him. Don't go with that crowd that's moving on, hundred friends. That lady I see at church age, he could jump up and down, dance under music, lukewarm. Didn't say it was ice cold now. I said it was lukewarm. That's the Pentecostal. And don't know that it's miserable, wretched, blind. Blind to what? The Word. To the manifestation of the Word. Because it never comes through their organizations. They cannot receive it. And you ministers down there in Tucson tonight, I don't hold you responsible for that. God does. I was there for three years. I told you I wouldn't start a church. I didn't. Brother Perry Green started. And I was there three years, and not one time did you invite me to your pulpit. 
I sat in Tucson for nearly three years. God will take me from the desert one of these days. This message must live. Amen. Now, I tried my best to get into you. I, I know the reason you did it. You hear why the reason you did it? Your denomination will kick you out. And you know how many of you have talked to that first wrestler? And you know it's the truth. Shame on you. Come out of it. Get out of there, brother. If there's any life in you, you'll be like that little eagle that you spoke of. You'll hear the Word of God. <coughs> Remember, you're going to hear this for the last time one of these days. We're real close now. Won't you come tonight? Dear God, we set solemnly now a Thanksgiving day. It really is, Lord. I am grateful, Lord, to be living in this day. This is the greatest day Paul, the apostle, longed to see this day. The great man of old longed to see it. The prophets longed to see it. They looked for this day. Abraham looked for this day for he sought for a city whose builder and maker was God. It hangs right above us tonight. John seen the Spirit of God descending out of heaven. Bore a record. Know that that was the Son of God. And think now he's choosing his bride. Dear God, out across the land everywhere, speak to their hearts. You're the only one who can change their heart. If that wasn't seen put in there at the beginning, they'll never see it, Lord. They're just the blind will lead the blind. They'll fall in the ditch as sure as anything. Because your word says they will. Now, Father, be it we see across the country, around the world, in Africa, dozens, dozens through South Africa, Mozambique, all across the country, little assemblies taking these tapes and sold this tape, go to 20 some odd different nations. And they're beginning to see it and pull away, hundreds and hundreds of them. Won't take many, Lord. And when the last member is received into the body, Christ will come. Lord God, I'm asking the bride tonight, the ones that I feel just pulled away and waiting, may they separate themselves from everything in the world. They must lay in the presence of the warm sunlight of the Son of God, bathing in His Word and His love. Grant it, dear God. May these people here visible have held up their hands tonight, dozens of them through this great tabernacle. I pray, God, that new life will come into them. I pray for across the nation and even around the world where the tape will be played, that they also will receive this Thanksgiving message and know by the hints and things that's been thrown what they must do. I pray it, Father. Grant it. Bless them. They're yours. I know it's customary now, Father, that we ask the people to the altar. And I pray, dear God, that in every mission, everywhere around and in across the world, that they will come to the altar, the black, the white, yellow, brown, wherever they are, the rich, the poor, the indifferent, the beggars, whatever they are, the denominationals, those who set self-styled and self-centered. Oh, God, naked, miserable, wretched, blind, and don't even know it. You said it would be that way, and it's that way. So I pray, Father, that you'll call every seed tonight and everywhere around the world that this may fall, may it catch that little eagle that knows the voice of his Lord. Grant it, Lord, I commit them to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now, with your heads bowed here to the visible audience, but some here that hasn't been saved, not even given your heart to God, don't you think you ought to be thankful for what Jesus did for you? To think that you are a sinner, that you're an alien from God, and yet something is your heart knocking. How do you know but what you are, one of those little eagles? You're a miserable and will be miserable till you surrender to it. Why not make this one of the greatest thanksgiving you ever had when you received Jesus Christ as your Savior? Will you come up here and stand at the altar? I'll pray with you if you will come. Any sinner, man or woman, boy or girl, church member or not church member, church member doesn't make you a Christian now. The altar's open. Will you come? Any sinner that would want to come receive the Lord Jesus Christ would like to really quit some of you denominationals they would like to quit feeding on that chicken food. Of saying you belong to this and it's all right. You really want to know what the real baptism of the Holy Ghost is? Come find out. The altar's open. We're ready. Just come right up out, out of your seat. Come right up and kneel down here at the altar. This brother that's just come. Thanksgiving. Oh God, I'm so thankful to you. That all my life, I've known there's been something, Lord. I've never been satisfied. I've tried. 
I, I thought next year I'll do it. The next week I'll do it. Next time I hear an altar call, I will someday. I put it off and put it off. But Lord, I know there's something wrong with me. I always believed that there was something different. And now, Lord, tonight I'm thankful for a preparation that's been made by the Son of God that my sins, actually my unbelief, would be washed away from me. I'm coming tonight and kneel down to accept the great Thanksgiving blessing that Jesus Christ did for me when He died for me at Calvary. Will you come? Now, these people are kneeling around the altar here. Why don't you get up and come? You've wanted to do it. You've tried it. Just think of Brother Lyle Palmer, our good, precious brother. He was sitting in the yard, so I understand, looking at his little girl playing croquet out there or something, and pitched over in the chair and was dead before he could even make a move. You don't know what time you're going to leave here. You just don't know what time that you're going. It may be yet tonight. So why not come and settle it now? Come on, people. Can't you feel something tugging at you? Uh, I know there's many of you here that should be right here to order. Just this six or seven people here is not what's sitting in here. Now, if you believe me and watch just the platform things happen, you believe me now. One day, my voice will be stilled. You won't hear it no more. You might wish you would have come. You say, but Brother Branham, I've been a church member. I don't make any difference. What you do? So it... So had Nicodemus been a church member. So had John, Peter, James, Paul. All the rest of them been church members. Paul was a church member until something happened one night, or one day it was, and he come. He was a changed church member then to a son of God. Won't you come? Oh, he was trained. He was intellectual. He know he was trained one of the greatest trained schools there was. From Elia, one of the finest teachers there was in the land. But he knew he needed something. Won't you come? Once more, I ask you, in where, here or around the nation, I ask you wherever you are and what assembly you are, at this Thanksgiving hour, remember, I'm being taped here, not only here, but in heaven. You know, it's scientifically proved that every move you make is recorded. They prove that. Remember, television proves that. The television doesn't, doesn't manufacture the picture. You're the picture. It just transmits that, what you're doing, into a channel. You're there anyhow. See, when you move your finger, that move goes around the world. Every time that you put on a dress, your looks goes around the world. It's on a record. Every thought that goes through your mind is on a record. And someday the record's going to quit playing. It's going to be put in the album. And then as a judgment, it's going to be come back. There you stand with Bob Hare, claiming to be a Christian. There you stand with thoughts in your mind against the Word. And it's right in your mind. You can't hide it. Remember, television science even knows that's true. You're standing right now knowing that you should be here. Remember, when this is recorded at the day of the judgment, that same thought that you're having will be coming right back to your mind again. There will be right on record. The whole world will see it played. Why don't the world looking at you on the day of the judgment, all the angels there, if you're ashamed to be here when your picture is being made now, at the day of the judgment, I'll be ashamed of you. For I anointed my word, sent it to you. You wouldn't believe it. You hid yourself behind something. Oh, you say, I'm good enough. I've done this. I've danced in the Spirit. I've spoken tongues. So does the heathen. I shouted, so does the heathen. How can you turn back on the word then? Why not? Why not come to him now? Why? Why not? Why not come to him now? Why? But you're one of the members of his body. Why? Oh, 
little eagle come on. Lord, I'm thankful. I'm very thankful. Thanksgiving to you, Lord. Not for natural food, yet that, but Lord, the end times here, I'm thankful for this spiritual food, Lord. The spiritual food of the seven seals was promised to be opened. You said that'll be something different. No, no, you can't add one word. To, it's already in there. It's just hid. It's sealed. How many understand that? Say amen. See? You say, well, that's a mystery. I'll come for No, no. It's already rich. You can't add one word to it or take one from it. See, it's already in there. It's just got to be revealed in the last days. Won't you come? Come on now, friend. If you can't understand, come kneel down and talk to him about it. If I can't make it plain to you, he will. For he is a, a dissolver of all doubts. In his sanctified throne. Oh, why? Won't you come? Why? Why not come to him now? Remember, there's a recording making of this. Not only on this tape, but God's great record. Each one of you. Ever move when you bow your head, bow your heart. What thought goes through your mind? Remember, it's being recorded right now in glory. And the record's going to be played on the day of judgment. Where's your decision? Oh, how you want to change it that day. I'm just going to wait because there's many, many around the altar now. See, maybe one of them, if I held just a little longer, there might be another one out there. It might be somewhere in New York. It might be somewhere in Philadelphia. Out in California, in Arizona, somewhere. There might be another one coming. Pastor, wherever you are, don't give the altar call up now. We may never see another Thanksgiving. This might be the last one, and records will be put up tonight for the last time. The tape will run out one of these days. The record will be cut, and it'll be in God's album, and it's going to be played back what your thoughts is now. Don't say you didn't know different. You do. But no man can come to me except my Father draws him. And all the Father has given me, they will come. But I believe I was sitting out there somewhere and I had the least thought. I'd sure take up here as hard as I could. Oh, I... Oh, I... Are you finished? You sure you're not grieving his spirit now? Let's keep our heads bowed down. You sure you haven't grieved his spirit? You sure you've done just exactly what he told you to do? Yeah, pause it now. Remember, you, you may not another have another chance. The record may be finished cut tonight. This may be all of it. This may be the last tape for you. Are you sure you're ready now? If so, I'll leave it in your hands in the name of the Lord Jesus. While the choir is singing softly, I'm going to pray for these that's down here. I'm just kind of a very odd sort of a Christian. I believe that God has to do the saving. I believe God has to plant the word. I, the Lord, says the Bible, Isaiah, I, the Lord, have planted it. I'll water it day and night. That's some should pluck it from my hand. Before I ask anyone to come around the altar with these people, I want to pray for them myself. Let's bow our heads now. Dear Jesus, I just quoted your word that your prophet said. And I know the words of the prophets are true. And you said, I, the Lord, have planted it. Well, certainly you put it on the Lamb's book of life before the foundation of the world. I, the Lord, have planted it, and I'll water it day and night unless some should pluck it from my hand. These probably, Lord, has heard of many altar calls. But you're still watering it, Lord. Here they are tonight. May they just turn loose tonight, Father, from all of the things of the world, all the sins and troubles that's in their heart. Just sanely, reverently in their heart, Turn loose to your word right now and say, Lord Jesus, down in my heart, I've always believed that there was something for me 
that I never have received yet. Though I've tried, as the expression's been made tonight, to follow the hymn. But there was something that seemed strange to me. It didn't sound just right. And tonight, I feel that I'm coming now closer into the arms of the living Word. I'm coming here just as reverently in my right mind. I've settled down here by this altar. I want salvation, Lord, so bad. I'm so hungry. I want you, Lord, to hold me in your arms tonight. Not through any emotion, but through the spirit of love. Take me into your arms, dear God. I'm your child. I feel that I'm that eagle they were talking about. Catch me, Lord. I'm jumping. I raised up from a seat and knelt down here. Catch me, Lord. I'm jumping. Bring me on your wings, Lord, away from these things of the world. Let me fly away from the filth of this world, from my bad habits, from all my denominational traditions. Let me come only to you, dear God. That your Holy Spirit might pour into me the forgiveness of all of my doubts. May I tonight become your child, fresh, born, and a new creature tonight. Catch me, carry me away beyond the clucking of the hen. Carry me away to the eagle's nest. For it's there that I can be nurtured by the Word of God until I'm able to fly. Grant it, dear God. Take them, they're yours. This is my prayer with sincerity. Hallelujah. Praying over dying people. Grant it, Father. I offer this prayer in their behalf. For the glory of God, I ask it. Now, with our heads bowed, I wonder around the altar now, that you have knelt here, many of us claim to be Christians, but you felt that there's always something somewhere that you didn't possess. You might have done all the religious acts. You might have shouted. You might have uh, uh, done all things. You might have danced in the Spirit. You might have spoken tongues. And no one can say anything wrong against that. That's true. That's all good. But you see, that's gifts of the Spirit without the Spirit. If the Spirit was there, that feeling would be feeling condemned like that. Do you really sincerely here at the altar believe that right now while you're here that just the act of turning yourself loose not in emotion now, but in genuine, unadulterated faith that God will receive you and nurture you with His Word until you're an eagle yourself and can fly. If you do, and you want God to do that, raise up your hand. You it's around the altar. God bless you. Each one has their hands up. <coughs> now, real quietly, I'm going to ask consecrated men and women who really know God most of it's very strange. It seems like it's that way. All the calls that I make is mostly all men. You know, in a regular run, it's women. But it's all men here. I think there's one woman at the altar tonight, maybe two. It's usually women. But somehow or another, I guess it seems like women think I talk against them. I don't. My sister. Three of you, somebody said this. Yeah, I can't see over the top of the altar here. All right. Some of you consecrated Christians, come here and stand with me in prayer just a minute. On the altar, wherever you are, on the platform, somebody really knows God. Just knows how to stand here just a few minutes for prayer with them. Then we'll dismiss the audience. Everybody be real reverent. I don't leave. Just come here and stand around. Some of you people that really believe this to be the truth, that we're entering another age. We're entering the raptured age. You know, the church can't go in its condition. And it can't get any better. It must get worse. How many knows that? Say amen. It's got to get worse. And it can't go like this. See, it's got to be something. And it's moving right now, friend. It's, it's, it's on. The move is on for the bride. It's the truth. That's thus saith the Lord. Move up now. Consecrated Christians. That wants your, your record to find out that these who come sincerely, that you want to come and offer prayer with them as your brothers and sisters. Come up around the altar. Stand around here just a moment for prayer. Someone else wants to come? Stand around here. Just kneel down by them. Just walk where you men, around those men, you women, sweetly, humbly, ask prayer for them. Dear God, help me. I surrender all. I surrender my denomination. I surrender my first wedding. I surrender my first husband. I surrender everything, Lord. All.
nation. I surrender church. I surrender myself. I surrender my ideas. All to thee, my blessed Savior. I surrender all. Now I expect it. Now I expect it. And I surrender to you. I surrender to you. All together. I... 